My name is Kapil Kak, and my question is addressed to High Commissioner Jahangir Kazi. Uh, I would like to uh, suggest two very quick points and then uh, seek your indulgence. Uh, I believe that uh, there is a deep ideological conflict in the state ideologies of India and Pakistan. And uh, this is not uh, to sort of uh, uh, praise India's secularism and democracy and pluralism and therefore by implication say that the operation of a religion deciding the equality or inequality of human beings is, is not right. Uh, but uh, the point about uh, two-nation theory, which, uh, which Mr. Dixit rightly said, it could be three-nation, ten-nation, we have no business to talk about it. But I would like to suggest, High Commissioner Kazi, that uh, the desire to affirm this two-nation theory, in a sense, becomes critical for Pakistan to justify how a Muslim majority state of India must secede from India and join Pakistan. Uh, my suggestion, sir, would be that Kashmir is far too intractable an issue uh, to be resolved in a short term. It needs to be put on the back burner if we have to look at the future and discard the past which has been the flavor of this morning. I would also like to suggest that uh, on 13th of April 1999, uh, drawing upon this question which uh, uh, Raj asked on behalf of General Malik, uh, General uh, Musharraf in Karachi made a statement that even if the issue of Kashmir is resolved to the entire satisfaction of Pakistan, our low intensity conflict with India will continue because of its hegemonic behavior. So in the context of these two or three quick points I have made, would you think that the dynamics of uh, the political military order uh, and the growth of civil society will in a way uh, draw upon new perspectives on Indo-Pakistan relations? Thank you. Well, I'll try and respond very briefly to, um, uh, to these. Number one, you said there's a major ideological divide between the two countries, which is really responsible for Pakistan's position on Kashmir. Uh, and I think Mr. Dixit also made that point when he thought there were deeper attitudes um, involved. Now, without going into that question, and I probably differ with you quite considerably um, uh, in the way in which you frame that um, uh, statement, but what Pakistan has been asking for is not for the Kashmir issue to be resolved on any, on any two-nation principle, but on the democratic principle which India subscribes to, which is that the views of the majority of the people and the United Nations resolutions uh, suggests a mechanism to ascertain that majority. So our position rests on that. We don't have a territorial claim. We have an expectation, a hope, and a, a belief that were that to happen, the majority might uh, 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 decide to accede to Pakistan. But our case is based on the democratic principle that with reference to the disposition of the state, the disputed state of Jammu and Kashmir, the way to do that is through consulting the wishes of the majority of the people. That is a democratic principle, not a communal principle, and nothing to do with what you call the two-nation theory. The two-nation theory, of course, is uh, what lay behind the Pakistan movement, and that is rooted in history, and that opens up a whole uh, separate di discussion which we won't go into right now. On the, uh, your other point was that uh, you refer to uh, some report about the president. I'm asking you to refer to, which is uh, an inaccurate report, uh, report as far as I know, but that here once again you are tending to rake up the past rather than taking note of what he has said as recently as January the 12th, which is absolutely emphatically that Pakistan will not countenance countenance extremism of any kind in the guise of the freedom struggle of Kashmir. The freedom struggle of Kashmir or the freedom movement of Kashmir is something to which we will continue to give our support, but we will not countenance any acts of terrorism as part of that movement or 
somebody giving the excuse as a justification for acts of terror. No way. That is out. And that is what you really should be concentrating on rather than raking up the files of the past to come up with statements which, which are not rooted in fact and which are in any case utterly and totally irrelevant. As regards uh, the uh, speech by General Musharraf when he was not president. Uh, the the, can we have a question please? You know, quite that's, that's right. I'm asking. You know, right. but the question is yeah. Every single Pakistani has, uh, newspaper has carried that report of the English-speaking union meeting uh, in Karachi on April 12th, 1999. Uh, high, uh, uh, high Commissioner, it appeared in the papers of the 13th. Uh, high Commissioner was present there at that meeting, later, at that time in Pakistan. That's a separate matter. Uh, I do want to, the question, can we be friends? Uh, should we be foes? Uh, I thought Jawaharlal Nehru, at a particularly bad patch during India-Pakistan relations, put the matter the way I'm sure uh, Kazi Sahib would like. He said that we cannot be enemies forever. We have got to be friends. But I think realistically it's not a very short-term process. As for friendship, I think let me also point out two things. One. When Rasgotra uh, Sahib was the, uh, no, negotiating, no, no, the, my questions are implicit in the, in the comment I'm making. They were uh, reporting that your no war pact, our treaty of peace, friendship, and cooperation. Did Pakistan not say that, sorry, we can't use the word friendship? And the substitute word suggested was good neighborliness. On a particular occasion, when a clause Raskotra left to Niaz Naik to draft whichever way he wants to and I'll accept it. It was promised that it will be sent to the High Commission here. That clause never arrived. That, I think, I want to say that what all is implicit yeah. and the last, last comment on friendship I might make is not my comment. It's a comment by the most distinguished Pakistani economist, uh, Shahid Javed Barkhi. He wrote four articles in Dawn so not very long ago, in which he said that in a 20-year time frame, he visualizes, given the present rates of growth in the two countries, that Pakistan's choice at that time will be either to be, what you were referring to yourself, sir, Canada vis-a-vis -vis United States or Mexico vis-a-vis -vis United States. This is Barkey's comments, not mine. So would you like to respond? Well, very briefly. You talked about peace and friendship um, uh, as a title. In those days, the, the title peace and fr friendship was brought into some dis disrepute because of the Soviet Union's habit of, uh, of uh, concluding such treaties with countries which it totally dominated.